What's up guys, it's Rogue Tay here and welcome back to yet another amazing video on the channel. So for today, I got you a deck that I think I haven't heard in about 10 years, guys. This deck 10 years ago was quite good. And to be honest, since then, it has fallen all the way down to obscurity. But I, Rogue Tay, am here today to bring it back. And I think I have found a effective way to play it. And it's one of these decks that I think any day could get some sort of legacy support i'm not going to go as far as to say it was a fan favorite but it was at least notorious if that was for the good or bad you shall see in this deck profile so if you do enjoy this type of content make sure you do leave a like comment down below i reply to all of them and hit that subscribe button it is free i guarantee that and without any further ado let's get straight into this deck profile <laughs> Okay guys, so starting off with this deck profile, we're going to have Triple of the Cleefort Stealth. This is a fantastic card for the ability to basically be compulsory evacuation device, but the extra caveat to it is that it cannot be responded to, which is really nice. So if you put it at the end of your chain links, your opponent can't respond to any of it. We have Triple of the Quillfort Carrier. This is your compulse, but only for monsters. And we have Double of the Cleefort Helix, which is your compulse, but for back row. I'm not going to be going over the pendulum effects because all of them more or less have the same pendulum effect, which is either your Kli monsters gain 300 attack or your opponent's monsters lose 300 attack. For the vanilla Kli forts, we have triple of the Kli fort scout. This is by far the best Kli. Just basically the original pay eight and feel great because it lets you search any Kli fort card and it isn't once per turn. So we've got to make sure that we do abuse that. We have double of the Kli fort monolith. This card is sort of your draw during the end phase. It's not as good, obviously, as Scout, but it is searchable as well through our... I forgot the name of the spell now. Through our Summoner's Art. For one of Cleeforts, we have the Cleefort Cephalopod, which is all right for burn. We have the one Cleefort Disc, which is good when you're pushing for game because it summons two from the deck. We have the one Cleefort Shell, which sort of does piercing battle damage. And it's a fair balance of Pendulum 1 and 9 scales as well, so you do get Pendulum Summons quite frequently in this build. That is it for our sort of normal Cleeforts. For our two towers, we have Cleefort Tower himself. The boy's so good that they named him after himself. Unoutable basically by spells, traps, and monsters that are level or rank 10 or lower. And every single turn, he will send one monster from the field or your opponent's hand to the graveyard. And we're playing one Cleefort Skybay, same protection, except it is a change of heart every single turn. We're only playing two because they're sort of difficult to summon turn one, and it's more of like a late game thing where you're just going to summon it onto the board and secure the game from there. Moving on to our Cleefort spells, of course we have Triple of the Sacrifice. This card is your rota when it goes to the graveyard, but the important effect is... Not only for the attack boost, but also that your Cleeforts counts as two tributes, which is very, very useful because your high level Cleeforts require two tributes. With Sacrifice, the one monster is enough. And then, of course, you will get the Surge. We have the one Field Spell in the Laser Clip. This is your addition. This is your sort of double summon for the turn. It's quite useful. It's searchable, so we only play one. And it's the same philosophy with the re Cle 8 I believe is how you pronounce it. This card is a automatic win against Flunderese. If you don't know what it does, level four or lower normal summon monsters have their effects negated and level five or higher special summon monsters have their effects negated and they are banished when they leave the field, which is crazy considering this is a continuous trap and searchable. The only thing is you gotta make sure you have a Cleefort card on the field or else it will out itself. But this against Flunderese just absolutely destroys the deck and you win the game. For the normal spells, we of course have triple Pot of extravagance we don't care about our extra deck so it's literally just a free draw to gives us more advantage and there's no real downside apart from the fact that you can't do the end phase draw but usually you won't be getting the end phase draw in the first turn that often anyway and you'd rather just draw two straight up instead of getting it at the end phase because you'll be drawing cards and you'll be able to use them we have triple of the summoner's art this is basically just to get scout some other occasions you could get Monolith, but this is basically just to get Scout, because Scout isn't once per turn, and Scout gets you any of your key cards, so you can get Monolith off Scout, so that's why you basically just get Scout off the Summoner's R, and again, it's not once per turn. For a quick play spell, I thought 
playing the Wavering Eyes is still useful. It is a way to clear up your scales and get a search. It's a way to do burn damage. And if you go against under pendulum decks, you get the bonus effects of banishing a card in the field and adding another copy of Wavering Eyes itself. So if you go against the Draco Slayers, you are really, really good with this card in the main deck. For the Floodgates, and there are many, we have Triple Skill Drain. Really beneficial for your Cleefort monsters because it sort of negates their own effects, which lowers their attack. Because if you normal summon them without tributing, they lower their attack. But with Skill Drain, you know, when they go battle phase, declare an attack, you flip Skill Drain, and then boom, they have massive attack again, and your opponent crashes their monster for nothing. So that is why Skill Drain is really good. And of course, your big uh, Cleefort monsters aren't affected by spells and traps anyway, so Skill Drain doesn't apply to them. This is the tech card that I think is really, really nice in this deck. It's triple and the band played on. I believe that this card against Cash Tira is insanely strong, guys. If you don't know what this card does, which I don't blame you because I only recently discovered its existence, to be honest with you, neither player can special summon monsters of the same level as those they control. And all the Cash Tiras, for the most part, apart from one, are level seven. So if they have one Cash Tira on the board, they are locked out of summoning level seven monsters which is really, really good. And the, also the extra effect this card has is neither player can special summon monsters with the same rank. So if they have a Xyz, if you're playing Kashtira, this is rank seven, they are locked out of summoning rank sevens as well. So I think triple and the ban played on is really nice. You might be asking yourself, you are gonna be locking yourself out of special summoning, but this is basically a normal summon deck anyway. Very rarely would you pendulum summon, only when you're really going for game and there are ways to sort of switch off your own and the ban played on with your Cleefort Genius that you do play in the extra deck. So that is why we're playing Triple and the band played on. So I think it's very good against Cash Tira. We have double Rivalry of the Warlords and double goes and Match. All of your Klees are machines and all of your Klees are Earths. So they don't really hinder you at all. There can be only one does hinder you because you won't be able to actually attempt the Tribute Summon. So don't play that one. Just play two of these Floodgates instead and your opponent is gonna have a very rough time, to be fair. And they are gonna hate you for playing so many hand traps, but it is what it is. I think this deck is actually quite decent in the stun capacity. I don't think you're gonna be playing this as a combo deck. I don't think you're gonna be playing this as anything that isn't a control deck at the moment. I think the cards, although they are nice, you can sort of feel their age, so you do gotta play them with some floodgates to sort of slow the game down and keep it to your pace. So now moving on to the extra deck, I'm just gonna show you a few basic cards. We have Triple of the Cleefort Genius. This is actually a decent card to make if you need the negation right away. If you don't know what it does, it can negate two cards on the field. Their effects, one from yours and one from your opponent. It's actually beneficial sometimes to negate your own cards as well, like with certain floodgates. If you wanna have two level fives on the board and you have Anderban played on, you can sort of negate your own Anderban played on till the end phase get two level fives. You can negate your own Cleefort monster's effects, especially if you've normal summoned them, you'll give them back their normal attack while negating an opponent's card. And it has the effect that if two monsters are special summoned at the same time to its arrows, you search for a level five or higher machine. So your entire deck basically. That is, and we play three because of extra. We're gonna be playing Triple Nova. I'm only gonna be showing one because I only have one. And we're gonna be playing Triple Infinity very rarely do you go into the extra deck, I'm going to be honest with you, but I guess if you do, you sort of want to have options. So we are playing three of each, and we are playing triple Volcosaurus. Those are the only cards I think are mandatory in the extra deck. And if I am playing Winter Cherries in the side deck, so I guess the other slots, the other three slots could be something like uh, Gigantic Sprite. You can hit some of the Cash Tira cards. You can maybe hit some Sword Soul cards. And it's really up to preference I guess on the last bits of the extra deck hence why I'm only showing the cards I believe that are mandatory so that is the end of the deck profile guys I hope you guys did enjoy my take on Cleeforts I know it's a bit of an obscure deck but I think it's a deck that deserves some love especially if it can be considered rogue or table 500 that is what we love here on the channel let's make sure we get all the Cleefort players down in the comments below sharing their deck lists and proving that it, all, it always isn't about the meta decks. You've got to show love to all the other decks that do exist. But I am Rogue to here, and I'll see you all on the next video.